Hi, everyone. Thanks so much for joining Salpo's Automating Your Business Processes webinar today. Um, we're going to look at all the different ways you can harness uh, the Salpo features like business rules, communications, um, and our API to build a, bill a bulletproof process. Um, in your Salpo system just so that you can optimize your resources. So let's go ahead and get started. When you log into Salpo, uh, kind of the a primary easy way to benefit from automation is setting up your dashboard. So this is the main screen when each user logs in. Each user has a customizable dashboard so that they can see information that is relevant to them. But it's a great way of seeing that information right off the bat so that you're not having to log in and filter reports um, to identify that information. It's right there, real time in front of you as soon as you log in. And throughout the day as you're sat at your desk and need to reference back to look at something, if there's any updates, you can see all that information in real time so that you're not having to reach out to other team members and get in touch with them to find out what the status of something is, if they've completed their tasks, um, what the total amount of is what's going on in the pipeline, where some tickets are sat, um, any SLAs that are close to being reached. All this information can be viewed right on your dashboard to optimize kind of your own time and what you're looking for within the system. There, that's actually one of the main stats that comes out of benefiting from automation and using your CRM. It's something that like six hours uh, for is spent per uh, week per CRM user, which equates to something like 15,000 uh, pounds per user. And when you end up being a, a, a business owner, that time that your team is spent doing administrative tasks or searching for information and following up can become costly instead of having them actually do their jobs or those little different tasks um, that they can execute on to really make the business more profitable or spending that time with customers. So that's the main point of looking at the automation today. Um, so whilst we do have a dashboard view, there are lots of different things that you can take advantage of in the system. Primarily, let's look. we're gonna be looking at business rules today and communications, and then talking about our API. So we're going to look at how to streamline your business activities to re reduce your resource consumption, alerting different team members of status updates or changes, uh, assigning sales to different agents based on specific conditioning, speeding up your quoting and follow-up scheduling. So that's primarily looking at lead nurturing and uh, managing your customers' expectations and things. Um, then updating fields based on the value of another field. And lastly, looking at one-click calling. So let's get started on the first one of streamlining some business activities. So the first option or the first kind of point with that is managing this dashboard. So in Salpo, you can have widgets that are all customizable and you can move them around to reflect your own preference. And uh, this first main widget here is a summary of your tasks. So instead of having to search through a system and just keep it in your head as to what you need to follow up on, having a task list sent up right when you first log in makes it quite easy and visible so that you know what you need to prioritize for the day and moving forward. You can also create widgets that are based around your team so that you can look at what's going on with the team and any outstanding tasks and or tasks that are coming up this week. That data doesn't always have to reflect in a task component. It can be shown here in a list view. So if you wanted to keep some uh, a high level review going on over some tasks or events that are going that are taking place that your team's hosting or participating in, you can see and get visibility on that information um, within a widget or taking advantage of these workflow widgets like this. So I can see the distribution of where all of the statuses of my contacts, my tickets, my events, uh, and or customer satisfactions, things like that, or even creating one like a sales stage. So there's lots of different widgets that you can use to populate this information so that you're reducing the amount of time, like I mentioned earlier, running those reports, accessing the information, reaching out to a different team member or um, following up with management to pass something down for you. Uh, you have access to that information as it's if it's available to you to then um, report on it. 
Some of the next things we're going to looking at is business rules. So in this system, I have a series of different business rules created, and you can create business rules as many as you want within Salpo. So I can have a wide range of things taking place here. So I have one called sale assignment, and I recommend having a detailed description in here so that you really can identify the difference between the different business rules that you've set up. So if I this one is to alert yours, users when a sale has been assigned to them um, or if there's a new opportunity that's come through. So like let's say we have used our API to um, set up the system so that as soon as a new lead is, comes in or an inquiry comes in via our website, then it auto creates an opportunity in Salpo. And then I would want as soon as that opportunity is created, I want to receive an alert so that I know it's come through. Since it wasn't manually entered by one of our team members or someone didn't call in and then there's some manual intervention there, this was something that was auto-generated from our website and it reduces the amount of time that I'm having to then spend inputting that data. It's taking it directly from the web form and inputting it into Salpo and then I'm just receiving an alert. So it's a great way to kind of um, automate that process with your customer and end user interaction. Another frequent use for something like that is support tickets. So if you're online and completing out a web form as to what's going on with your ticket, um, maybe submitting a, a screenshots, all those sorts of things, it can then create that module record within Salpo automatically and pre-populate those field requirements. And then that way it reduces the amount of time that your staff and team is having to enter in that data. Or let's say you're, you're writing articles and blogs and things for your team members. You can have a web, or for your customers, you can have a web form on your website or a customer portal, something like that, where the customer then enters in that data of what their brief is, but, and then it would push off to the content generator to then write the content and push it back to the end customer to approve. And then once it's approved, it pushes back out onto whatever medium that the customer needs that data to push to. So that's all using our interactions um, within Salpo and using the API and some other third parties, whether it's a you've created a Salpo portal or you have a um, WordPress site or all these different kinds of different components where or even if it's just your website with a web form where using the API helps you interact and automate those steps so that you're minimizing the time that's spent chasing contacts back and forth. You're minimizing the time that you're having to do a field update and generation and interpretation of things. You just have right from the customer directly and it's auto creating that information within Salpo. Um, so that's really going to work towards reducing that consumption. Um, so again, here's a list of all the different types of um, business rules I've set up in this system. But to look at one specifically, we're going to first check out this ticket completed notified customer. So this is going to be alerting members of a status update or a change to an assignment. And so then I've used this description of when a ticket status is marked as completed, notify the support agent to follow up and tell the customer. So if you think through the ticket workflow process, whether this is an issue maybe or a repair or a refund um, there or a rewrite, um, there could be lots of different uh use cases of what I've called a ticket. Um, so it's just, you can interpret this into your own terminology. So whilst I have this tickets module up here, you may have something called faults or issues or um, like I have other ones like projects and vacancies. So if I was using this in the projects element, this might be when the project is completed, um, notify the project manager to alert the customer. Um, or if a property becomes vacant, uh, alert the estate agent to start working this to fill the the um, available property. So there can be lots of different use cases in this depending upon your business case. Um, this one is just we're going to be looking at using a ticket. So if the ticket is marked completed, notify the customer that it's all been resolved. So I come through Salpo and I'm going to, right now I can't edit this because this is a pre-existing um, business rule, but when you're generating a new business rule, you can enter in all this new data. They start off as blank fields. So I've marked my primary module as a ticket 
And the event is where I've stated what's going to take place. So I've said when a specific field is updated, and that's because there's custom fields against this module record. So when the field of status has changed from in progress to complete, I want something to happen. So that's what this event is. Otherwise, you can use events like uh, when a new record is created or if anything on the record is updated or if the record's deleted. Um, or like we've done in this one, you can focus on specific fields. Um, so then the system's asking, well, what field are you looking at? And I'm saying the overall status. So when this field is updated, then I want something to happen. Um, the next part in defining a business rule is then saying, well, is there any specific conditions? So because I'm looking for specifically looking at when the ticket moves from in progress to complete, I'm going to say when the overall status uh, is completed. So I'm defining a condition. If I didn't care, if like if the status moved from completed back to in progress, then back to unassigned, then from unassigned to completed, like it didn't matter what any type of workflow was in there, um, or as long I'll, maybe I only wanted alerts any time that that field was changed. Um, I might create a ticket specifically for that and not include a condition. And that could be uh, the case for these sorts of fields that maybe any time a status or an interest or an availability changes, you want an alert. Um, but this one, because there's going to be a specific task associated with the status that it's in, um, I do want to define a condition here. So I'm saying when the overall status is completed. So this is my field. And then this is one of the values that's available under those the field. Any of the custom fields that I have set up against the ticket module are available here for me to select. And then depending on the field that I've selected, it will change the condition component um, out defined here. Um, so if it's a date field, it might say is or between, um, or if it's a number field, I might have more than, less than. So this terminology used here will be dependent upon the field type as it's defined when you're setting up that field um, in the control panel. The next component is you get to define if it should take place within a specific time limit. So if I wanted to say, let's say every time a new claim is reported, um, this let's say this is an insurance. Every time a new claim is reported, we have to follow up within one month based to meet a specific SLA. Then I could say any time that the status of a a, a claim is um, you know created or something or reported, then one month from now do something. Um, so that's what, when then that's when I would come in and define my action. So it's now saying, well, what when do you want this rule to take place? Um, if I want something to happen immediately, I don't need to define a take place trigger in here. If I want something to happen, let's say I, I have chosen a date field as um, my condition or my my standard field of what's updated. So like if I putting if I'm putting in something like a contract, um, start date, and let's say the contract only runs for one year, but three months prior to the contract ending, I want to start reaching out to my customer to remind them to renew um, so that I can start winning that next year's business. So what I would do in here is I'd choose my date field and I'd say, um, I'd leave my condition blank essentially, but I would say three months. So I'd use this to take place option and I'd say, I want this to happen three months before and then the actual date allocated. So not the event selected. So I don't want to start or make, have this take place three months before when that field actually gets updated, I want it to be three months before the actual contract date or uh, completion date or something. Or I would say nine months after um, that contract start date is. So then I'm doing it, um, you know, three months before the 12 month end period comes up. So you can def use this time to take place option to define um, your actions in here. 
Um, so then the next component is defining your action. So this one is my ticket complete. So I want to notify the customer. Um, we'll take a look at setting up those different components uh, just shortly. And, but we're going to look through then now at executing this rule. So my actions though are, um, I have the option to update fields based, you know, I have, so I, um, if I'm updating this field, then I want to update another field within that record. Um, I have the option to create a note and I have the option to create a task. So that's in this option here, I've just said, I want to create a scheduled communication or a task um, for someone to follow up. So that's coming all the way back up here to this description of notifying the customer once the ticket status is marked as completed. And it's creating a task for me in Salpo um, to do that. So now if we jump to a tickets page, so this is an issue review, I'm going to come over here and change this overall status to completed. And just update that field. Now that that's saved, if I refresh this, you'll see that a task is appearing against this record with for Natalie to follow up and alert the customer. So um, you'll see this right here. And then now this is something that I can action and task um, move forward with. If I come to my home screen and refresh this, you'll also see that that task auto generates and pushes um, to my task list on my dashboard as well. And so now you'll see I've got this new ticket um, reminder in here as well. So now this is my task list building. And when we first logged in in the system, you'll see here too that there is this, um, we had a one um, communication scheduled in here for me to follow up with already. It has now or it has since fallen overdue, but another one has happened as well. So as the system's churning, just naturally these tasks will come up into your system so that as you get new alerts, um, they're being populated into this task list for you. So let's next look at a business rule um, so that we can take a look at assigning sales to different agents based off of specific conditions. So if I'm looking at a sale assignment and I've got, I, I'm defining this to say alert a user when a sale has been assigned to them. So this doesn't have to be a specific um, field that's called assigned to them. If you're using this for something else, this is to show the, the idea of if a, if a field is updated to a specific status, um, then you can alert the diff a, a user based off of that status. So it's similar to the uh, of the other one in just that it's a, a custom field being updated and you want to alert somebody about it. So the sale this component is sent up, set up the same way. It's just I've changed the module to be an opportunity instead of that ticket. The field I chose was assigned to. And now again, I've created a condition. So when the um, ticket is assigned to, or sorry, the sale is assigned to Natalie, we're going to create a new sale assignment that pushes over to Natalie. So if I then look at this opportunity and come into the system here, I'll have, right, currently it's assigned to Oliver, but if I change this, and assign this to Natalie and update that and we do this page refresh again you'll see that there is a, a new sale assignment against Natalie so let's jump back and look at and, and so here you'll see this Natalie to the customer for a new sale assignment but let's jump back now because um, I said we were going to have a look at what those actions look like so I'm going to remove this action so that you can see what this would look like creating it from start. So here are my options where I can update the field, create a communication, or create a scheduled communication or a task. So if I want to update a field, I get to pick the field, um, and it's asking me do I want to update an opportunity or a customer field. Let's say an opportunity one. What field do I want to update? Um, let's say it's that assigned to one. And what value do I want to change it to? Uh, we're going to change it to Ollie. So if this were the use case here, it would be saying anytime that a primary module or my opportunity, the assigned to field is changed to Natalie, I want it to auto change it 
to Oliver. And that's what that action would be doing. Um, or let's say every single time the um, percentage of close date reaches a specific amount, then I want to mark the sale as one. So there, that's another option. If I want to go back and look at another, so these are just like the, one field status, then updates another field status. Or if my event, instead of, if my event was something like when the event or the field was, sorry, not field, when the record was created, then it would be saying, well, when the record's created, mark the completed status to zero, auto populate that field to zero. So that's not something I'm having to kind of manually enter over and over and over again, I can create a bunch of different rules to then populate all sorts of different fields in the system so that I'm not having to manually input anything as soon as that record's created. So if there are standard fields where everything starts at zero or it starts at um, yet or to be assigned or it starts at in progress, um, things like that, you can have you use these business rules to pre-populate all that data so that when it does come to be looked at by the uh, first CRM user, they already have some of that content built out. So the next option is creating a communication and this would just be a note in the system. Um, and I'll go through um, that screen in more detail, but just do it on the scheduled communication so that you can see how we use this um, in the example we just went through with the sale assignment. So I'm going to hit next and you'll see it is that same screen. So I get to title this. So I'm going to probably say new sale assignment in here. I can change the method that we have defined in the system, whether that's one of the standard ones or a custom method that we defined in the control panel. And so you'll see that this is just like your create a communication module or screen. The only difference you'll see here is if I wanted to put in a specific end user, I can choose that, but this would mean any time a sale is assigned to Natalie, then alert Bob Jones if I selected him in here. But that's not what I wanted to do. I, I'm not saying that it would come to Natalie in this one. But maybe you do want to put the manager in there. Maybe Bob is my manager and any time a new sale is assigned to Natalie, then Bob wants to get an update. So any time a new sale is assigned to any of the team members that are specific to his territory or region, then he gets an update as well. But maybe we don't do updates like that. And we just want to assign this to the opportunity owner. So whilst the, any, that opportunity is assigned to Natalie, maybe I just want to pick the opportunity owner. Since we're doing this assigned to Natalie option, I would put Natalie in from the from user here because it's now specific to that end user. If though I want to do it as the opportunity owner, so that would be the field on the right hand side listed as owner here. So that is your sales rep owner not the record owner, which is defined up here in the permissions, but the sales rep owner on the right hand side of the screen, then that's where I'd be using that opportunity option. But because again, I'm sending this to a specific end user, I'm going to choose that user here. I then have a, this plus icon next to the contact and it's going to say, well, who, do, who should this task be? go against. And it could again go to the opportunity owner or you can just put in the customer name. Most frequently our users put in the customer name in here so that you can see Natalie has a task to follow up with uh, the contact and that's how it's that, that um, communication would move forward. I get to say when it will start and the duration in here as well. And then the last um, couple components um, start with this tag with option. So I can type in a specific tag. So that's when I'm looking in Salpo, that's these tags that I've used here. So I can tag it with a specific tag if I want to, but if I want this communication to populate against the specific opportunity that has just had this assigned to field updated, then I'm gonna use that plus icon and select the opportunity it's associated with and it's safe. So now anytime 
this task populates on my to-do list, I'm going to know the specific opportunity it's related to. This tag option is associated with any of the other modules when you're creating it as well. So even though we have chosen the opportunity as our primary module here, this can work for any of those other custom modules. So like the event, the installation, or ticket. So if a ticket gets assigned to me, then I can say in here, make sure Natalie knows which ticket it is specifically assigned to. If I want to receive an email reminder, I can define when that should come through. If I don't, I can mark that as none. And then any descriptive notes I can put into the system um, in here as well. I'm going to skip that though. And then I just click next and it, then the system will tell me, well, here's actually what you're asking for. Is this definitely what you want? So I can cancel, go back or confirm. So I am going to confirm that. And then I have this all done and you can save it. And then that's, that's it. You've now set up your business role. So next I want to um, kind of talk about how you can speed up the quoting and follow-up scheduling. And that's essentially using the role that we just use. So in auto using that auto scheduler, that's helping you pre-populate those follow-ups um, for any of your team members. So whilst I have just created this rule for assigned to Natalie. I may want to create another rule for when it's assigned to Ollie, and I may want to create a third rule for when it's assigned to Shen. So I can build out my entire system to pre-populate all of that data. Um, and then it's, yes, it might take some time to set that up and really identify where the automation will benefit yourselves and the team to optimize most efficiently. But as soon as that information is identified, um, you can really execute it into the system. Frequently, I would say the most use case for business rules like this is in that sales process pipeline. So if a lead hasn't been followed up in X amount of time, if a um, status has changed, but they have, it's also not showing as, or let's say a status has changed to um, pending follow-up, but then... Uh, the percentage completion rate hasn't moved in X amount of time. You can create any kind of rules based around that information to help ensure that your sales aren't falling through your pipeline or any of these gaps from when it's coming in as a, a lead to a qualified lead um, to a confirmed sale following up with the customers and then even getting invoice out, invoicing out and payment and um, any of those different steps so that you can start identifying depending on whatever department you're reviewing where those leaks in the process are and then if it is something that's administrative then maybe you can get it solved using automation so if it's in ticket responsiveness it might be something like well if we've just had a ticket reported how quickly are we responding to that the uh, ticket as soon as it's been reported or let's say it's a fault um, and then if that ticket's been reported and we've responded, are we meeting our SLAs? Um, how am I running my reports and generating that information? Well, if the system just runs it for me um, or alerts me when a SLA requirement is three hours from being due, then um, the system's kind of keeping me up to date and on my toes and alerting the team so that we're all optimizing that time and allocation and get it, meet, making sure that we don't have any repercussions for something that's then missed. A missed sale or a, a surpassed SLA could um, end up becoming costly to the organization. Um, so this is then another example we've just looked at two business rule options where you're scheduling tasks for someone. Well, what if I want to update a field value um, based off of the value of another field? So this is going to be um, kind of just like where I've said, where you get to update these different values um, across the system. And so this one I've marked where is, or I've noted where it's a ticket is marked as completed. And I'm saying when the completion percentage is 100%, mark the ticket status as completed. So that's gonna to have to be two different fields within my ticket module. So I've said here's my ticket module. My event is, again, I'm choosing to um, update a specific field, but I could create that or use it to say when a record is created or deleted. Uh, the field that I'm looking at is the completion percentage. 
my condition is going to be when the completion percentage is equal to 100. So this is where I was saying if it's a number value, you'll have different options for your condition here. Um, I do want this to take place immediately. And then in my actions options, how we just looked at updating the, the field, I've chosen the field value of over status. And I said, I want that overall status. And I want that field value to then be populated with completed. So let's jump into a ticket and have a look at how that would work. So now I want this completion percentage to be updated to 100. And as soon as I update that, and I'd have to refresh the page, the even if I, so right now I'm having to refresh the page because I was already on that page. But if somebody else in the system um, had just accessed that page, their overall status would immediately reflect as completed or it does show um, in their system as you're navigating around. So if I had navigated to a different tab and come back, it'd be updated. Um, so you can see here, I changed that completion percentage to 100, and then now my overall status is reading as completed. So that's, again, just one less field that I'm having to update. The system is completing that work for me. Um, and lastly, now let's have a look at one-click calling. So this is if you've got your VoIP system set up, so your voice over IP system, you can take advantage of just quick dialing essentially like you know when you're um, doing a google search on your phone and it comes back with the results of the business name and you can jump to their website you can get directions or you can call them it's basically using that same sort of functionality but you're doing it from your computer so then now i'm not having to type in that phone number i'm not manually entering in any data incorrectly i can just click on this phone number and it, it does an auto dial for me or same with having my email synced in Salpo. As soon as I click on this email, whether I have my email connected or not, um, it will open up my email provider and then have this end users or that, that contacts email address within the two section already for me. So I'm not having to worry again about manual data entry, copy pasting. It's just a quick click. Um, anything within the Salpo system that's hyperlinked like that, um, for contact details will then take you to that end contact component. So the address will take me directly to Google Maps. Any of the social media or website handles that are listed here will take me directly to that website um, for that social media login or, or if it is a social media or just a website if that's what's listed. So all of this um, really has tradition actually been shown across the industry as well to have um, to be shown to improve task completion rates. So if I have a list of tasks that I need to do, but then I have to search for the contact information, type in the, the data, um, or send the email, if it's something that's quick and automated for me, or I have a template that's built out in Salpo, um, that I can just copy paste into, then all of that information makes it much easier for me to then complete those tasks. It's not as time consuming for me to um, access all of that information or, or jump into it. Another great um, kind of fun fact in here with this automation is that 88% of CRM users have admitted to entering in incomplete data into the CRM. So from a business perspective, if I know that there's going to be inconsistencies that are coming from my team as they're adding in data, that's something I can proactively work against by doing things like creating just select fields. So instead of having the sponsorship being an open text field, it's going to be a field where I can then, it's predefined in here and I can define um, make that as a select versus you know, did someone put ACT SPN for active sponsor instead of actually typing out the words active sponsor? Because if I'm ever doing reports based off of my active sponsors, I want to just use the one select, the one option. I don't want to have to continually think of all the different abbreviations or versions that or typos that someone has put into the system here. Um, so then information like that, I am now getting more accurate reporting and results 
and my automation can then help my team by using fields like that. The automation helps my team get the data in accurately as well. Um, it's then reducing the time that they're having to put input that data um, and it takes the onus off of them of making sure any of those abbreviations and spellings and things are right. It's just predefined from the beginning for them. So I hope this webinar is going to help you deliver the right content to the right person at the right time. And you'll be able to take advantage of automation moving forward using Salpo. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to reach out to us. Feedback can be sent to our marketing at salpo.com team. And any questions that you have um, about the system, how to set it up, or a specific use case can be sent over to support at salpo.com. But realistically, if you reach out to either team, they'll get you in touch with the right person if they're unable to assist. So thanks again for joining, and we look forward to speaking soon.